I've come home, Papa. I've come home to stay. The devil did you get here? I ran away, Papa. I ran away from that silly school. You stopped that foolishness. That's the best there is. Didn't you always say experience was the best teacher? You never mind what I said. I sent you there, and that's where you're going to stay. Don't be mad, Papa. Please. It's just... I miss you so doggone well, you much... You watch your language, Missy. I sent you there so you'd be like your mama with learning and ladylike ways. But you come back here looking like a ragamuffin boy. Sounding worse than one. Well, they was looking for a girl, so I fooled them for a fact. I'm not going back, Papa. I'm staying here with you. Don't you want me, Papa? Aren't you just a little glad to see me? Papa? You don't move, honey. Don't make one sound. Papa, you're hurt! You go fetch my rifle, honey. Did you shake a leg, Missy? Saddlebags over there. They're full of money. I want you to take them and hide them down in the root cellar. And you hide down there yourself real good. And don't you dare come up out of there under any circumstances. You understand? Not unless you hear me call you or them go away. That's why you weren't glad to see me. On account of them, the bad men. Same horse we've been a trailer, and there's blood on the saddle. I figure he's hurt real bad. Well, let's go. Now, Reese, that's a downright unfriendly way to go calling on a fella. You're just liable to get a real unfriendly reception, too. Well, what kind of etiquette would you two use to go calling on a train robber? You are the biggest conclusion jumper I ever saw. I've lost count of the times a captain has told you not to go off half cocked. Oh, I'm a half cocked conclusion jumper, huh? Right. But admitting your faults is the biggest step toward correcting them. Well, I ain't admitting nothing. Now, that express man, he shot one of them train robbers, didn't he? What the man said. All right, and you saw that blood on the saddle. Well? Well, what, Reese? That's circumstantial evidence. Pure and simple. Well, five will get you ten that that fella in there ain't pure or simple. Reese, there's more than a hundred ways for a fella to get himself hurt without being shot. Besides, that sign we found this morning after the rainstorm was one man. Now, there's supposed to be five or six of them in this here gang. Well, the way I figured, the way I figured, them fellas, they split up when that storm hit. Figuring on to meet up later. Well, Reese, even if you figure it right, and they were going to meet here, if we go busting in there, there's going to be a lot of shooting, and you're going to warn them all off. Well, uh, yeah, we might be able to take him without even firing one shot, depending on how bad he's hurt. You can't count on that, Reese. Well, now, looky here, Reese. With Chad and I here outside the barn, and you way up yonder on a hill, we're going to have him in a crossfire, ain't we? Well, now, who says I it's gotta go? It's rules, Reese. Well, now, that's a democratic way, part. Well, you'd better be right, because we're losing good light if you ain't. All right, now, look, if you see anything from up there, you better holler out. Call like a crow so we know it's you. Hoot Owl's more his style. <laughs> me, Jim? <laughs> oh. Come on. Conclusion jumper, huh? Well, what do you got to say now? Well, I'd say he's a pretty fancy shot. I'd say he's about an inch or two high. Oh, you do. Someday, so help me.
Make him circle around. I'll keep him pinned down. Let's go. scared her, Reese. Sure would be funny after all these years if you got gunned down by a little old girl. Oh, now that's right. Hilarious. Just hilarious. Maybe you didn't hear me. I said to drop the guns. What might your name be, young lady? Might be anything. Well, if I had me a little girl like you, I'd think of a prettier name than that. She just kind of right sassy, ain't she, Chad? Mm. Just right sassy. And plumb out of patience. You know now, killing's a hanging offense, young lady. I think maybe we ought to save her from that fate, Reese. Let's put down the guns, huh? Shame on you, Joe, taking on little kids and a girl at that. Yeah, she wasn't so little that she didn't get the drop on the two of you. Oh, she's a wildcat, that one. And there wasn't any crying or tears. What's that? Yo! You let go of my puppet dust on you! You heard him and I'll spat your eyes out! Get off of me! Wait a minute! It's true a female's Get off of me! I ought to take a peach streak switch to your hide. She's trying to protect your paw. Must be him with Ben Paul. He's the one that's telling us he always knows how to handle women. Look at him. Wait a minute! Let go of her! Tell her to let go of me! Whoa! Young lady, stop it now! Papa! Papa! Papa, I'm sorry. I tried to help you. Are you all right? She gave more than she got. Fighting with somebody who can't fight back ain't fair, Missy. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Now, what would your mama think? But, Papa, you said that they were bad men, that they were after you. Well, I just made a little mistake, honey. These aren't the fellas I expect to come after me. Listen, young lady, you march right into that bedroom and get this here gentleman one of my shirts to replace the one you ruined. You sure you're going to be all right? I'm sure not. You just run along. Well, I better mosey along and keep an eye on her. See, she doesn't get the drop on the two of you again. <laughs> All right, now hand me your pistol nice and easy. Uh, thank you. I want to make a deal. Rangers don't make no deals. Rangers, huh? That's right. Well, there's no harm in trying. No sense in it, neither. Oh, yeah, there's sense in it. You got a kid like her. She doesn't know what kind of devilment she'd been mixed up in, and you don't want her to know. There's a lot of sense in it. <coughs> Take it easy now. How bad you've been hit. Ah, that's so bad. Counting on the fact it hasn't been looked at yet. <coughs> 100 to 1, you fellas will never get me back to Laredo. Unless one of you is pretty good at doctrine. We better make that deal right here and now. Go ahead, there's no harm in listening. All I want is to get her out of here. I want her to be safe. Get her into town. Get her on that train. I'm not leaving you, Papa. <coughs> Papa! 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 Uh, uh, no, no, don't tell me. We're going to have to go ahead and choke on another one of your culinary concoctions, right? Real gourmet know this is a polis to draw out the poison. Come to think of it, it might help to use some on you and Reese. <laughs> oh, you're a... 
Howdy. Didn't you never hear about a watched pot? Learn your doctrine in school? I never had much schooling. Learn this from a Mescalero medicine man. Papa says the Mescaleros are savages. <laughs> some. Just like some white men. Like the men who were after Papa. You got any idea who they might be? No. I wish I had. Well, I'd backtrack for a spell, but I didn't see any signs of anybody headed this way. Well, maybe, uh, maybe all that shooting scared him off. One thing for sure, from the way he was talking, somebody was gunning for him for sure. He doesn't look very good. <sighs> well, if you ask me, he was betting on a sure thing when he said we'd never get him back to Laredo. I don't know. Those Indian remedies that Joe knows are powerful potent. Water's boiling. I reckon you got every reason not to trust me. But I got a feeling I can trust you, Mr. Riley. And I'm beholden to you for trying so hard to help my pa. All right, let's pour it in here. Not too much now. That's it. Not too much. It's got to go on real thick. Like that? Just a little bit more. Oh! Just right. Stay right out here. You see, the one thing that a man doesn't like when he's hurting is having a bunch of people around. This is gonna hurt something fierce. So now, if you hear him holler, you you just sit tight. But you go on the warpath again. Understand? Mr. Riley, I'm sorry for what I did, hurting your hand and all. Well, I reckon you figured you had good cause. But no way you'd know who we was. Besides, put my gun hand anyway. Better hold him down, Reese. If you want to make yourself useful, Chad? Go up. Keep a mind off what's going on in here. I'll go. But try to keep him quiet. Yeah, it'd be rough on her if he started to raise a ruckus. Rough on her. I lost one shirt already today. I'm not going to try to take her two falls out of three. Hold on to him. Hold him still. Uh. What you doing, Missy? Wishing on a star? Mm-hmm. Waiting's the hardest part, isn't it? Waiting and not being able to do anything to help. That's always the hardest part. I think what you want to do is get yourself off to bed and get some rest. I couldn't. Not till I know if Papa's gonna be all right. I wish there was something to do. I know what you can do. Why don't you go over there and brew up some coffee? And Joe and Reese and I have been riding for a lot of hours. It might help to keep us awake. I've been so busy worrying about Papa. Plum forgot about you being hungry. Fix you some supper. Well, you don't have to go to any bother. No bother at all. Mommy used to say keeping busy made the time go faster. Yeah, it seems that way. She was always cooking something special or sewing or working in the garden. She'd home while she worked. Papa said she was part hummingbird. Yard was all full of flowers when Mama was here. Now they're all dead. Like she is. Sorry to hear that, Missy. The doctor and the preacher, they said it was a blessing on account of the pain being so bad. Her name was Susanna. They wrote a song about her. Did they? At least always that's what Papa used to say. He used to sing it when she used to get a little uppity. Oh, Susanna, gonna turn you across my knee. And then she'd say, you just try it, Mr. Mabry. You just try it. And then they'd get to laughing. Afterwards, Mom would always say, always marry a laughing man, Missy, because it makes the hard times easier. Mm. Papa never laughs anymore. Oh. Do you want 
something, Papa? Hey. What you doing still up? You get yourself plumb worn out. Couldn't sleep good for worrying. Yeah, I, uh, I guess not. But you're better off back in your own bed and, than setting up here. You get all cold and stiff. Now you go on back to your own bed and go on. There ain't nothing more we can do. We can pray. Pray? Yeah, I, uh, I guess so. Well, you, you go right ahead. Lord, I know you got a lot of real important things to see to. Reckon you already know what I got in my heart to say about Papa being bad hurt. I reckon surely you know he'd be a lot happier if he was with Mama. Only that'd leave me awful lonely without both of them. So, Lord, if it's all right with you, I wish you'd make Papa well again. Show me how to make him laugh again. I thank you kindly for listening. Amen. Catching cold, Mr. Bennett? Yeah, I... Seems like I am kind of choked up. Mama always kept some dried mint leaves in the cupboard. I'll just boil the water and you sniff the steam. Well, now you don't have to go to all that trouble. No trouble at all. You're being so kind and trying to help Papa. It's the least I can do. to behold. Sound asleep. What an angel of mercy he turned out to be. Uh, no better than he was sprouting wings. Now you see what you done. You went and woke her up. Hey, Papa. He was broke, Missy. He's gonna be all right. Oh, Joe, you're wonderful. You know what they say, out of the mouths of babes. Yeah. Now, why don't you go out there and rustle up some breakfast? You're gonna have to be riding off soon. I'll get you some eggs. Thank you. What about him? It'll only take one of us to handle a wounded prisoner. Yeah, you. I know I figured you'd do it. Why? Sure got a suspicious nature, doesn't he, Chad? Sure does. Try to give a man a couple of days off, just lounge around, not doing nothing, maybe get in a little fishing. All he's got to do is stick here to old Mabry is well enough to travel. Yeah, and then... Then taking him in and, and breaking that little girl's heart when she finds out what a what a no count kind of fella he really is. Now, Reese, you know what the Indians say about never judging a man? Not until you've walked in his moccasins for a whole moon. I ain't interested in what the Indians say, and I ain't interested in what you say. Uh, uh, Kim. Where's Kim? She's out hunting up some breakfast eggs. She's out there all alone. You get her back in here. Here, oh. now, take it easy. Take it easy. You're gonna bust that open again. Ah. First you tell us to get her out, and then you tell us to get her in. If Morgan ever gets a hold of her... Nick Morgan? Yeah. Uh, you ain't particular about the company you keep, are you? It wasn't easy to keep from going bad in Missouri after we came home from the war. There's a lot of bitterness, right or wrong. The law stood behind the winners. You're not trying to tell me that Morgan is just a poor, misunderstood victim of injustice. Like the James boys or the Youngers? Just telling you how it was. Well, that was a long time ago. Another time, another place. I've seen Morgan in all these years. I got married. Came here, started working this place. I didn't run across Morgan until... after Susanna died. Maybe if I had, we'd have had enough money to get her proper doctor, and we might have even been able to save her. Maybe you could have got killed, too. Come close to it. It's worth taking the chance. I swore to myself my daughter would never want for nothing. She'd have the proper school and in pretty clothes. 
She'd have a darn good chance of growing up to be somebody. You figure she'd want all that if she knew it all came from stolen money? Uh, I figured she'd never find out. And it all worked out with Morgan. The night I was shot, he promised he'd send my share of the money to that school, along with a letter saying that I was killed in an accident. And I woke up and I heard him playing cards. They were gambling away my share, thinking I was a goner. Honor among thieves, huh? They were going to divvy it up in the morning, so I just played possum. I stole it all right from under their noses. The first thing they knew about it was when I stampeded the horses through the camp. Easy. Easy, Mayor. Thanks. That's the deal I wanted to make with you fellas. The money and the Morgan boys when they came to get it. If you get her out of here, safe. Well, I think if Morgan was coming, he'd have been here by now. That depends on how long it took him to round up the horses and pick up my trail. Well, there's no sense in getting saddle sore if he's headed this way. With all the money at stake and me getting the best of him, he'll come. And we'll be waiting. Cooking up, Missy. Chili. I never made it before. Joe told me how. It's his favorite. Mm. Smells good, don't it? Yeah, it sure does. That'll hit the old spot when Joe comes in off guard, dude. He's still worried about him. Those men who were after Papa. Ain't worried at all. And don't you worry none neither. Hey, you know what I found outside this morning? What? A rose bush. Now, I, I think with a, a little bit of love and a lot of water, it might bloom again next spring. Show me. Well, right after supper. What did you have to go say a thing like that for? Hmm? Getting her hopes up. You know where he'll be next spring. And she can't stay here alone, and that's for sure. Reese, you're like the catfish calling the bullfrog big mouth. Who was it was outside fixing her swing today? That's different. Oh, and I heard you broke it, too, taking your turn. Oh, Joe had to go tell it, didn't he? Couldn't keep it to himself. Must have been some stunt to see. <laughs> Supper served. You gonna put on another show tomorrow, Park? <clears throat> Oh, let me help you with that. It looks heavy. Thanks. Mm. Mm -hmm. It does smell good, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. I'm trying to figure out why Papa didn't get the crops in this year. You suppose he's been sick and didn't tell me about it? Well, he, he just probably didn't want to worry you none, that's all. Mama knew. That's why she told me to come home. She told me Papa needed me here. I thought you told me that, uh, that your mother was dead, Missy. She comes to visit me sometimes. At night, when I'm asleep. Looks wonderful. <laughs> Aren't you hungry, Mr. Cooper? Yeah, sure I am. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you just dig in, Chad? Just dig in. You ain't never tasted nothing like this in your whole life. Ah, <laughs> this is the greatest. Yeah. Uh, Missy, I think I heard your father just call for you. I'll go see. Oh, boy, That's I thought bad, my huh? teeth was gonna melt <laughs> off. <laughs> oh. Just delicious. I'll get you some more. Oh, well, <laughs> actually, I, I just don't think I could eat another bite. Oh, I'd I'd relish it, little man, but but I think we ought to think about old Joe, you know. After all, this is his his favorite dish. That's right. He's lucky to have friends like you. So are we. I wish I could figure out what's got Papa so worried. Well, uh, well, I think he wants you to go back to school, little man. Now that you know he's gonna pull through, all right. He's got his heart set on you finishing school. And he's dead right. Did you finish school, Mr. Bennett? Who, me? Well, uh, no, not not exactly, no. Uh, but old, old Chad here did. Of course he did. But uh, old Joe and me, well, we just didn't. Well, nobody would know except for a few things like that. You ought to say Joe and I. That's the rule they teach at school. Well, that's why you ought to go back, so you don't end up like Joe... Joe and I. Joe and me. 
But you just said that. The rule changes. Well, now, how are you supposed to learn if they keep changing things all the time? That's what I keep saying. So I think maybe both of you better go back to school. Listen to that old mockingbird. That's a sign of real good luck. Oh, not that one, honey. That's a sign of company coming. Now, you get in there with your daddy and stay quiet. Go on. Well? Oh, there you are. Money's all here, sir, every cent of it. And you can tell them railroad people they won't have no more trouble from that Morgan gang. <laughs> I didn't see you bring them in. We buried them. Wiped them out to the last man, Captain. Who's going to take credit for killing him? Well, uh... Well, can't none of us take credit for that, Captain. Uh, poor fella got shot by one of them. Oh, Captain, you never, ever seen the way them outlaws come after us. Why, it was a sight to behold, Captain. It was just like we You'd were like me to... to make what's bound to be a long story short, sir. I am not interested in making a long story short, Cooper. I want to know what happened to this man. Tell it. Well, uh... <laughs> well, it's like to say, Captain, there's a little bit of bad in the best of us and a little bit of good in the worst of us. <laughs> you know what I mean. Skip the philosophy and stick to the facts, if that's possible. Well, the way I figured, Captain, Mabry had seen the right and wrong of it by the time we come along. Turned over the saddlebags of money he'd stole from Morgan to us. Told us they'd be coming after him. And sure enough, they did, Captain. Sure enough, they did. thing mattered to him was her being in danger and it being his fault. First time they come at us, we had them caught in a crossfire. Well, there must have been 20 or 30 of them outlaws, a shouting and a shooting, a coming at us from all sides, and us spread thin. What would Chad be in? So sick he was seeing double. <laughs> Got them both with one shot. I'll never believe it. I just know it. You hit? No, I ain't hit. You know what I can't figure out is why this chili didn't bother you or Joe none. Well, five will get you ten. You live through it. Odds oh, ain't so good that we're gonna live through much more of that. I'm running low on shells. Oh, oh, oh. Well, I'd give a half a month's pay to know what kind of devilman old Morgan's cooking up. Fixing to cook you, that's what. I'm gonna try and fire the house. We should better get out of here. It's too late. Get in here fast. Come on. I'll take the bedroom window. Maybe soak some blankets. Chicken coops on fire. So my stomach. Oh. Why, it was like fighting engines. Only a matter of time till one of them made it. Bedroom's on fire. Bring the blankets. Morgan just sat there waiting. Just waiting. Like a vulture. Fire was spreading. And we was running short of water. Messy, come here, little Messy. Come here, baby. Come here. There ain't a prayer stopping that now. Honey, you know that picture your mom on the mantel? You go fetch it for me, Missy. No, no, no. Go ahead, honey. Well, now that's a fool thing to do, sending her in there. Fire hadn't spread into there yet. It just smoked. I wonder out of here because you and I got plans to make. 
It's me Morgan wants, me and the money. Well, he won't want no witnesses, do you? Oh, we got one chance. If I was to make a breakout by the barn and back, I'd draw him off that way. Then you could take Kim out the other way, circle around. You oh. won't stand a chance. Will you listen to me, Bennett? Once in a lifetime, a man gets a chance to do something worthwhile, something that might make up for some of the wrongs he's done. So you gotta see it my way. If you had your own child, a kid like Kim, you'd know that it's worth dying if, if she could just be safe. Reese, give me a hand with Joe. <laughs> Bye, Missy. It's better this way. I got the picture, Papa! Papa! Papa, where are you? Papa! I was just too mule-headed to give it up. A bean <laughs> fell on his head. <clears throat> Where's your daddy, Missy? Morgan, if you want that money, come and get it! Well, that doggone fool went and done it. Come on, Missy. We're getting out of here. Come on. No, Joe, this way. Oh, Captain, you ain't ever seen anything like the fight that man put up. Now, he may have been a fool, but he was a fighting fool, Captain. A fighting fool he was. Why, he, he he scooped up a gun from one of them fellas we had dropped, and he got he got six of them before he went down. Six of them. Can you imagine that, Captain? I guess so. Uh... Uh, the boys and me wouldn't even be here if it wasn't for Mabry. Sounds like a candidate for a medal. Well, uh, would be kind of nice for Kim to have, Captain. The way she took on was just heart-rendering to see. But I reckon it's best he died without her finding out all them bad things he'd done. But he made up for it, Captain. He made up for him, oh, the way he went out there. The way he went out there, Captain, is something I never could see and never will see in my whole life. I'm sure you won't. Uh, you two have anything to add? <clears throat> you disappoint me. No colorful touches. No mortgage on the old homestead. No girl tied to the railroad tracks. She didn't have nothing to do with it, Captain. Nothing to do with it at all. Reese, would you just never mind? Captain, you wanted to see Buckmeister. Well, if that'll be all, Captain. Oh, that is not all. You take a seat over there, and I'll deal with you when I get back. Wonder what's wrong. Same thing as always. Your lies. 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 Didn't Chad get sick? Didn't you get hit on the head? And wasn't there a fire? Uh, Reese, couldn't you just let us tell it? I, I swear, you and the brothers Grimm. Well, I never heard of them, Jaspers. What do they want it for? Uh, uh. Captain, you know how Reese is. He's got this peculiar propensity. Now, you wait just one For making the truth minute. sound like it was exaggerated. You had your chance to talk, Cooper. Now, you listen while I tell all of you a little story. Once upon a time, there were three little rangers and six very big bad men. Count them, unless you have double vision or triple vision. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's far enough, Morgan. Throw down your guns. We're taking you in. Thanks for cover, boys. for the rangers. But then the rangers were no match for one little girl. 
You smell something funny? Something burning. Don't you bother yourself now. Ain't no real harm done. But that was your dinner. I made it special just for you. And then we'll just make ourselves some more, won't we? Come on now. Not gonna take long. There we go. I guess they don't exaggerate when they brag about you Texas Rangers. You know, that Morgan was no match for the three of you fellas. Well, I guess we just outnumbered it. <laughs> it's a good thing you shoot better than you count, Mr. Bennett. Hey, Missy, that's just his way of bragging. You know something, honey? I have a prodigious thirst. A glass of that spring water, it sure tastes sweet. I'll get you some right quick, Papa. Thanks, honey. A nice little girl you got there. Yeah. Well, I guess you'll be taking me back tomorrow. Guess so. A sizable price on my head. We ain't no bounty hunters. I didn't mean that to be an insult. Just a shame to think about all that reward money going to waste when it could be put to such good use. Rangers don't take no reward. Listen, Bennett, I'm not a man to get down on his knees and beg, but that's exactly what I'm doing right now. It ain't no use. But it's not for me, it's for Kim. She's got no place to go. she got nobody to take care of her. Well, you, you should have thought of that a lot sooner. Reward money could buy her a whole new life. Or you could send her back to the school. Nobody's gonna send me away from you, Papa. I'm staying right here with you. Now you hush your fuss, Missy. The fact is, I'm going away. So going you... away? But why? You love this place. Someday you'll understand, honey. I'm going with you, Papa. I can't take you where I'm going, honey. Can't, Papa? Or don't want to? Now look, girl, don't make it any harder than it is. Where I'm going, I just can't take you. Chances are she's going to find out sometime anyhow. Be easier if you, you tell her now. Hey, pretty thing, why don't you hop up here and sit next to me? Honey, the fact is that... Well, I've done some bad things, and now i got to pay for them. There's men that came here today, Morgan and the rest of them. I was one of them. But they were trying to kill you. I took some money from them. Some money I helped them steal from a train. Oh, Papa. It wasn't the first time I rode with them, either. Ever since Mama died, it was on account of that old school. You needed the money for that, on account of me. It wasn't that way at all. I took to stealing because it was an easy way to get hold of money. A lot easier than staying here, and planting crops and harvesting them. I'm sure I could have hung on and done it the honest way, the hard way. But the fact is, I, I was just plain weak. I know better now. Oh, Papa. Now it's too late. You mind taking off your boots? Huh? Your boots. I expect a man to get a decent night's sleep with you clumping up and down and back and forth in your boots. Well, it beats me how you could sleep anyway. <laughs> I guess I just got a clear conscience, Reese. Well, I got something stuck in my craw, that's all. Yeah, me too. Must have been that chilly out yet. Do you find anything around here to fix your stomach up with? Well, it ain't my stomach that's bothering me. <sighs> Reese, he can't sleep. Oh, he can't sleep? Well, well what you need, Reese, is... Uh... Nice big glass of warm milk. I'll fix you some. <laughs> what I need is a nice big bottle of hard liquor. I never figured I'd feel sorry for saving a man's life. Now, you ain't wasting all that worry on Mabry, are you? No, no, not him at all. I'm worried on account of little Kim. Just pains me to break that little girl's heart. Shucks, Reese. I, 
I know what you mean, but I don't see what we can do about it. The law is the law. Well, there, there ought to be something we could do. You know, a doctor once told me if you got to make a cut, do it fast with a sharp knife, and it hurts less that way. Mm. Chad's right. The quicker we get it done, the easier it's going to be. Well, I wouldn't expect either one of you two to give nobody a break unless there was something in it for you. You talk like it's us that done something wrong. But she ain't done nobody no wrong. Well, we know that, Reese, but that doesn't excuse her father. Have you forgotten that this man held up four banks and robbed the Missouri Pacific Railroad? No, I ain't forgotten. I ain't forgotten at all, but that ain't the point, blast it. What's going to happen to her? What's going to happen to her? She's going to wind up in an orphan's home. That's what's going to happen. You ever been in the inside of one of those places? able to sleep nights just just thinking about it being in a place like that well look maybe maybe the court will go easy on him if he if he tells him that he did it all on account of her no that ain't what he's gonna say at all he spelled it out for spelled it right out didn't do no good she she holds herself to blame for it well there's not very much we can do about that is there Man's got to pay for his crime. Well, our only job is to take him into Laredo. That's it, and that's all. See, Risa, Ranger can't afford to get soft-hearted. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Ranger ain't supposed to have no heart at all. Well, maybe it's time that I just quit. Might not be a bad idea to resign. Find myself a, a good woman and get married. Because I can adopt little Missy and take her away from that orphan's home. Yeah. Yeah. Might not be a bad idea at all. How would you like a glass of warm milk? first little ranger felt obligated to save the child from that fate, so he decided to get sick. So sick that Joe would have to go to town to fetch the doctor, leaving Reese alone. Then he'd throw a spell that would keep Reese so busy they could escape undetected. And strangely enough, the second little ranger had exactly the same notion. Of course, he did his duty by warning Mabry that if he ever got into trouble again, he'd settle his hash personally. Oh. Oh. But the third little ranger, being the observant type, saw no reason for that long, tiresome ride. So he arranged a rather clever device to avoid the ride and any suspicion of soft-heartedness on his part. You can imagine the surprise and shock at the discovery that their prisoner had escaped. Escaped? Well, how'd you ever let him do a thing like that? Well, how did you two let him sneak by you? On account of him having some kind of fit. Ooh. Well, I got five dollars says he's a faking. You mean to tell me he did it on a purpose? Well, if the chili was bad, how come the two of us ain't sick? Well, I don't prove nothing. You two must just have cast iron stomachs. And besides, you're wasting a lot of time. You ought to be out oh. chasing after him. Gee, old head spinning like a squirrel cage. Hmm. Wait, it's gonna be up to you, Reese. Well, I reckon Missy's been talking to the Lord again. Ha <laughs> ha! Ain't no chance of tracking them in this kind of weather, I'll tell you that, no sir, Reese. All right, Reese. I'll tell you one thing. It's gonna be your funeral. What do you mean, my funeral? Well, the captain ain't never gonna settle for an excuse like that. Captain Parmalee's gonna be frogging at the mouth. You let something like a little old thunderstorm stop you. Why, uh, Ranger's supposed to go after his man. He's killed or captured. Well, I guess there's only one way to end it, then. Best way, too. Kill him. Kill him!
And so the three little rangers rode off, figuring everybody was going to live happily ever after. Must be a mind reader. That presupposes there is a mind to be read. Now, of all the mush-headed chicken... Now, I'm you right. just hold on one minute, Captain. Just because we're rangers don't mean we ain't human. If you'd ever met up with that little kid... I have see met her. And her father, when he turned himself in. Figured being on the run all the time, looking over his shoulder, wouldn't be good for Missy. Wanted a fresh start. Wanted to make sure you wouldn't get in any trouble. You sure picked a funny way to do it. You knew all the time what happened, didn't you? Yes. And you let us hang ourselves for it? Yes. Now, Captain, that ain't fair. Ain't fair. Aiding and abetting the escape of a wanted man. Coming in here with a cockeyed collection of pious prevarications. You pulled some slippery shenanigans in the past, but this is the top. I ought to throw the book at you. If I hadn't promised Missy... Uh -huh. oh. 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 oh, just <laughs> what did you promise? I didn't promise anything. I uh, said I'd think about it. I said I might give you all another chance uh, under certain conditions. Oh, that's mighty kind of you, Captain. Sure was persuasive, wasn't she, Captain? Persuasion had nothing to do with it. It just so happens that I have an assignment that you three are eminently qualified for. It's a dirty, thankless job. Nobody volunteered for it, and if you three think you can handle it... Yes, sir, yes, Captain. Sir. Yes, sir, Captain. You volunteering? Yes, sir, Captain. In that case, you get first crack of the new equipment. You mean them new rifles we've been expecting? Just open a case. <laughs> oh. oh. Oh, no. See you around the stables, boys. <laughs> yeah. What the devil is? Hey! What do you think you're doing here? What do you... What do you got? Were you rushing to Lady Hildegard's rescue? You should have been around when her husband stabbed her to death in the year 1666. <laughs> well, Reese, that's a new record for you, Pard. What is all this, anyways? Allow me, gentlemen. Gentlemen. Traveling Museum of Horrors. See the world's greatest murderers and their victims. Bluebeard, Lucretia Borgia, Richard III, and many others. Professor Paracelsus, Smith, Curator. Smith? Oh, Smith. At your service, gentlemen. So, you're gonna put the show on in Simpson's Barn, huh? More than a mere show, my dear sir. An edifying and educational display. There's a visit after we open tomorrow and experience the classic Aristotelian catharsis through pity and fear. Adults, 25 cents. Children, a dime. Tell your friends. Please, Quitch. A little more respect for Bloody Mary. Well, she sure looked real to me. Oh, I think maybe you need a pair of glasses like the professor has. I don't need glasses. Why, well, I can spot a baby flea on a hairy dog from a half mile off. Oh, I see. Well, then, uh, maybe you've just had a little more experience at spotting hairy fleas on dogs than you have at telling live women from dummies. Now, you know anybody could have made a mistake like that, and I know just as much about live women as you do. <laughs> uh, here's the place you're looking for. Much obliged to you for the lift, Mr. Benner. Not a bit. Glad for your company. May 
I help you? This town's looking better and better. Did you want a room? First, I'd like to see Con McCloud. Who? Me brother, Con McCloud. Me name's Shamus. Uh, there's no one by that name here. This is the Hotel Laredo. But then he has to be here. He wrote me. There's no one named McCloud in this hotel. Now, he's a sailor like myself. Two or three years younger. Of course, he's not as good looking. Now, Khan put you up to this, one of his jokes. You mean it? He isn't here? And he hasn't been here? But what about the letter? How do you explain a letter to me? I can't. But I do know who's in this hotel and who isn't. Come nearly 2,000 miles to see Khan. Haven't seen him since he shipped out six years ago. We're sorry. Mother, he has a right to know. There's nothing he can do for his brother now, and it could hurt us. Wouldn't still be so frightened. Why risk it? It never happened. I want it forgotten. Con McLeod was just never in this hotel. your brother. Ask Dr. Ingram. Dr. Ingram? Why don't you let Reese and I take some of your big winnings over the bank, put them in the vault for safekeeping, huh? Did you ever see anybody as lucky at cards as old Joe here? No, I knew a fellow <laughs> in New Orleans once, won 83 straight hands. 83 in a row? Yep. Now, that's hard to believe, Jack. Yeah, a hard loser that shot him figured the same thing. Two dollars. <whistles> There's your two dollar, and I'll raise you two. King. Ooh -wee. Wow. You know, Chad, winning ain't the only reason a man is staying a poker game all night. Well, certainly not losing. Yeah. Oh, but Joe's got a foolproof system. Gillis, will you stop whistling? You got a tin air, you better leave. I'm staying in the game. That's a boy. Stay in there with him, Joe. Yeah, your luck's bound to change sooner or later. He said you're staying. With what? I'm going to give you an I.O.U. All right. I'm feeling generous. I'll take your I.O.U. Your word as a ranger should be all right. Anything we can do for you, Joe? Yeah. Keep your hands off me and go away. Well, we'll right. bring you in luck, Joe. We'll bring you in luck. <laughs> Shamus McCloud. I'm looking for my brother, Con. Why come to me? 
I was told you could help me to find him. You were misinformed. I don't think I was, Doctor. And I'm going to get an answer out of you one way or another. Your brother's dead. I don't believe you. Who killed him? No one. He died of natural causes. He was young and healthy. He was feeling fine when he wrote me to meet him here. Now, what could have come on him so sudden? He developed a high fever now. At first, I couldn't diagnose it. And then I learned he came in from a ship from Galveston. There were several cases of cholera. Cholera? I thought it was best to say nothing. Best for who? People, this hotel, the town. And what about my brother, doctor? Give any thought to what was best for him? Wasn't much I could do. Except let him die, bury him, and act as if he had never been here before. I was trying to avoid a needless case of panic, in case it was cholera. You mean you're not even sure it was cholera he had? McCloud, listen to me. It could have been something else. You could have helped him if you hadn't been so busy looking out for everyone else. It must have been cholera. You treated him like a rabbit wolf to crawl off in the plains to die alone. No thought of him. You let him die quick, and the quicker the better. You stood back and you let him die. <laughs> Fighting with you. Likewise. How do you feel? I'm all right. I'm sorry about your brother. But you'd forget too, just like the rest of us. Thanks for your help, boys. Oh, that's all right, Doc. Always a pleasure. Well, he can keep his thanks, but he might have stood us a drink. No, yeah, Doc, not him, boy. That'd be a friendly thing to do. Besides, he knows it ain't good for you. Yeah, I don't even think he likes his own dog. didn't want to wake us up. Well, he usually ain't that thoughtful. Probably was up all, all night playing poker. Won all his money back. No, he didn't win his money back. When'd you talk to him? I have Well, then how do you know? Well, simple deduction, Reese. Looking at the evidence and putting two and two together. Which of which and what of what? Well, first thing, how did Joe come in the room last night? Quiet. Right. Now, if he'd been a big winner in that poker game... He'd have come in noisy. And woke us all up for bragging. Right again. Now, something else. Take a look at his left hand. What do you notice? It needs washing. <laughs> Not that. His ring is missing. Yeah. So he probably lost that in the poker game, too. You see, just by using your brain and watching a man, you can find out anything you want to know about him without even talking to him. Oh. Excuse me. I, I've finished with this. Oh, good, good. Well, why didn't you tell me he's going to get your knife sharp? I'd have had him done mine. Oh, you can get yours done later. What do I owe you, mister? Ah, uh, mister, what do I owe you? Oh, sorry. I forgot. I always wear these when I'm on the grindstone. It keeps out that screeching. Well, I'll tell you what, part. If you got another pair of them things, I'll give you a dollar for them. 
<laughs> yeah, if you had a dollar left. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, ladies. Good morning. With your kind permission, I would like to put at least one of my posters here in your lobby. The Museum of Horrors? As if we didn't have enough unpleasantness in Laredo. Madam, our exhibit is a tribute to murder as an art, practiced with consummate skill and cunning over the centuries. Look, I've seen murder right out there in the street. Dumb brutes of men with no better way to settle an argument than shoot one another. Mother... Believe me, I share your feeling about such crude violence such as that. But uh, those whom our exhibit immortalizes approach the challenge with infinite subtlety and the most bizarre inventiveness. Well, it sounds pretty unhealthy to me. Oh, on the contrary. I think you'd find a visit to our museum most rewarding. One little poster... All right, ah. put it up, put it up. Ah. Oh. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Doors open at 10. Come, Quitch. Would you be staying on, Mr. McLeod? I'm not sure what I'll be doing. The plans were all set in one direction. Mr. McLeod, I, I don't want you to think we were heartless. We were frightened, but we did everything we could for your brother. I understand. We did exactly what the doctor advised. Hmm. Sometimes I wish we'd used less of his advice and more of our own. Now you slow down, Jock. Just slow down a bit. I want him arrested. What's this about? Well, the doc here, he, uh, he claims that you killed his dog. Your dog? I found him this morning choked to death. Now, why would I want to kill your dog? To get back at me, that's why. You're clearly not responsible for what you do. Because I jumped you yesterday. You would have killed me if the Rangers had stopped you. Well, now, he might have roughed you up a bit, but I wouldn't say he was out to kill you. And, Dave, put yourself in his place. Well, you seem to have found yourself some very dedicated defenders. I didn't kill your dog. You won't lock him up? Well, now, I can't just arrest him because you tell me to. Riley. More concerned about the dog dead than he ever was that poor animal when it was alive. But who could do such a thing? Maybe it was an accident. Huh? Uh. I've seen that dog. And what happened to him weren't no accident. Uh uh. <whistles> Riley, I want my money. Well, you got my old you, Gillis. Yeah, but I want cash, and I want it today. I'm leaving Laredo in the morning. I mean to take that $55 with me. Well, I'll send it to you. Well, I may be moving around a little. By request. Riley, if I don't have that money by 9 tonight, I'm going to make a lot of trouble for you in this town. I'm going to go to your captain. I'm going to ask him why all the bills you bought the honor among the uh, Rangers when he's got a four-flusher like you in the company. Uh-oh. <clears throat> Gillis, you go to my captain. I'm going to carve you seven ways from Sunday. Nine o'clock. Fifty-five dollars, cash. Joe, how come you didn't hit that man? Stay out of my business, Chad. Oh, what are you frothing about, Joe? You know that tin horn ain't going to go to the cabin. I know he ain't. <clears throat> Somebody should have told that tin horn that it ain't very smart to rile Joseph Riley. Can't tell that crockhead nothing. Yeah, that's a fact. Tell the Halseys I'd like to talk to them now. 
Mrs. Halsey's still kind of shaken up after finding that body in the hallway, sir. Oh, maybe Miss Halsey can tell us all we need to know. Well, I'll get her for you, sir. How was he killed? Strangled. I think he came out of his room, started for those stairs, and somebody met him in the hall. That's the way I figured it, too, Captain. Did you, Bennett? Yeah. And I figured out why he was killed, too. I'm listening. Well, Gillis was a heavy winner at cards, you know. So I hear. Well, must have been carrying three or four hundred on him. Everybody in town knew it. So somebody jumped him and robbed him. Uh, that the way you figure it? Yes, sir. Just by putting two and two together, Captain. It seems when you put two and two together, you get five. Gillis was found with $400 in his wallet, untouched. 400? Mm-hmm. Well, uh, then I guess he wasn't robbed then, huh? Oh, I can say that's quite a reasonable assumption. Where did I go wrong? Captain? I'll make this brief. I'm all right now. Gillis was a guest in the hotel? And he'd been here a week. He told me he'd be checking out tomorrow morning. When was the last time you saw him? About 5.30. That's when he told me he'd be leaving tomorrow morning. And then he went to his room? Well, he went upstairs, I suppose, to his room. Now, are those the only stairs that lead to the second floor? No, there's one in back. But we keep it locked because it leads right down to the kitchen. And nobody could have used them? I have the key. Were you in the lobby from the time Gillis went up to his room till the time your mother found the body? No. Mother and I had some supper. I must have been away from the desk nearly half an hour. And during that half hour, anybody could come up and go down without being seen? Yes. Who were the people who went up and went down while you were here on duty? Uh, let me see. It was Professor Smythe and the man that works for him, and Mr. McLeod, and David, Dr. Ingram. I came to see a patient. All of Mrs. Tompkins. Well, let me see. There was somebody else. Oh, yes. Mr. Riley. Yeah, that's right. I, uh, I want to see Gillis uh, settle a debt. You asked me which room he was in. Yeah. Did he, uh, did he owe you money, Joe? Well, no, sir. You see, uh, he had one of my IOUs. Oh, now, sir, it's very easy to clear Joe. Clear me of what, Chad? Now, don't you start telling me how to put two and two together. No, sir, but it, it's so simple. Why would Joe want to kill Gillis? Chad, will you stop? Joe, I'm just trying to help you out, pardon? Now, his only possible motivation would be to get his IOU back, right? Right. Now, since the IOU was found in Gillis's wallet, it's obvious that Joe didn't kill him. That would be obvious. Only the IOU was not found in Gillis's wallet nor in his room. It wasn't. Somebody took it. Well, certainly not Joe. Sure, it was me. Huh? All right, I went up to see Gillis. See, I got a hold of that fancy deck of marked cards of his. The one he'd been using to bleed me all week. How did you manage it, Joe? Well, I'm pretty good with luggage locks, Captain. Well, that was when I uh, asked you which was his room, ma'am. I went on up and got the cards and left. The second time I came back, uh, you weren't on duty, ma'am. And you borrowed the cards to face Gillis with them. Well, see, I made him a business proposition, Captain. Uh, his crooked cards for my IOU, the money I'd lost, and uh, my ring. He accepted? Well, he sure didn't want those gunsels over at the saloon to know that he'd been using crooked cards. Joe, when you came down the stairs, did you see anybody in the hallway or in the lobby when you left? Well, Dr. Ingram was, uh, was up in the hallway, Captain. I was just going into Miss Tompkins' room. Now, Captain. Let's look at this from another angle. Cooper. Captain, even if Joe did want to kill Gillis, he'd have done it outside in an alley someplace. He certainly wouldn't have walked into the lobby of the hotel and asked Barbara what room he was in. And I thought of something else, too. Cooper, will you stop thinking? I'm going to put a guard here tonight. Thank you, Captain. I'll continue this in the morning. You three stay here until you're relieved. Captain? A little bit awkward. One of your own men, a suspect, huh? At this point, Doctor, everybody went up those stairs as a suspect. If there's anything I can do. Thank you, Mr. McLeod. But it seems Mother and I will be very well protected. See you in the morning. You're too trusting, Barbara. It's just your way of looking at it. 
A man's charm is no index to his character. A man can smile and still be a villain. I know. But I don't think there's anything villainous in the smile itself. Well, try not to worry. Who's worried? We're with you, Joe. You bet. We're with you all the way to the end. You mean will you get me hanged? Frighten your mom. Oh. Everybody's a bit edgy. You doing your homework? Hmm. I hope I never have to add another column of figures again. Arithmetic. Now, that was my favorite subject. Especially fractions. I don't know why. Just some pleasure in taking all those little bits and pieces and putting them together and coming up with the right answer. I liked English. Especially literature, you know, poetry. Sure. All girls do. Arithmetic's more practical, I'm afraid. Well, someday you'll have someone around to take care of the practical things. I'll leave you to read your poetry. I'm afraid I don't let myself think about those things anymore, Mr. McLeod. Now, what did you call me, Shamus? Shamus. <laughs> I was engaged, uh, and my husband-to-be was killed in a gunfight in the street. Oh, I see. I'm sorry. He provoked it. Men seem to have that streak of violence in them. All men. I suppose there are a few exceptions. Well, now, if you come across any fractions you can't tame, I'm your man. I'll remember that. Good night. Oh, Mother. You know, who'd have thought at first that there was so much warmth and gentleness in that Shamus McLeod? Mother, you were eavesdropping. Your voice is carried. You know, Dave isn't going to like this. He's a jealous man. You always think the worst of Dave. Well, the feeling is mutual. He thinks he'd have a wife to share his unhappiness if I'd kept my mouth shut. Well, a woman could do worse than marry Dave Ingram. I'm not so sure. Sometimes I think he took up medicine not to ease people's pain, but to enjoy it. Oh, Mother. All right, I've said enough. Forget it. I'll go think of something pleasant like, um, Shamus McLeod and his fractions. <laughs> <laughs> Beside. And the outside kitchen door was open. The killer must have heard you and then ran off. I don't remember what I exactly did then. You screamed. Were you in your room, Mr. McLeod? No, I was here in the lobby. I'd just come in. Shame, Mr. Mr. McLeod took over then. Captain, I think Miss Halsey should try to rest. Of course. If there's anything I can do, Barbara. No, I'll be all right. Where were you this evening, Professor? In my room. The irony of it. My entire life has been dedicated to the study of murder in all its refinements. And here, when I have an opportunity for first-hand experience, I'm asleep. And him? Also asleep. Can he speak for himself? Oh, Mr. Quitch is the perfect companion. He listens attentively and says nothing. 
Cam, this just don't make no sense to me at all. First Ingram's dog, then the gambler, now Mrs. Halsey. Doesn't make sense because we're not dealing with a sensible mind. This killer is no longer responsible. I disagree with you, Doctor. An examination of the most celebrated practitioners of the ultimate crime will show... No history lessons tonight, Professor. I'm concerned with here and now. Three deaths, and no reason to think this is the end. And that's why I feel you owe it to this town to take McLeod into custody. Why are you so set on getting me locked up? For everyone's protection. You think a lot about other people now, don't you, Doctor? And never a thought for yourself? Ordinarily, I wouldn't feel qualified to tell a lawman how to do his job. But these are unusual circumstances. Now, if a man is a threat to himself and to others, he should be put away. Whether his body is diseased or his mind. Now, I appreciate your concern, Doctor. But I am placing nobody in custody. Oh, but, uh, Mr. McLeod, you are not to leave Laredo. It suits me. I presume we are to be confined to Laredo also, Captain? Your presumption was quite correct, Professor. Business has been most disappointing. But as you so eloquently put it, Captain, who is interested in the great crimes of the past when they are part of one in the here and now? Quitch. <laughs> Hey, Jack. What's the hurry? Well, it's plain enough to see now, isn't it? What is? Who's going to be next? You heard what I heard, didn't you? Sure, I heard. I'm not going to let this man out of my sight. When the killer strikes again, I'm going to be there. one kill. I know that, but the killer's not going to move in with half the ranger company following him. Well, I'm staying out of sight. Stand now like a fat calf in a famine. Now go on back to barracks and just, just don't give me any more argument. I hope you haven't made me lose him. Blacksmith, Doctor? Exactly the same as the others. Please stop that! Sorry. Captain, how many people are going to die before you arrest McLeod? No, I'm not going to arrest McLeod or anybody else just because you're prejudiced against them. Well, it's so obvious the man's been deranged because of the shock of his brother's death. Now, he has a grievance, or at least thinks he does, against this whole town. When we've talked, he seemed to be completely in control of himself. It means nothing. Believe me, I know what I'm talking about. During the war, I... I tried to save the life of a badly wounded soldier. He died on the operating table. And then his best friend started to brood. And finally, he... He blamed... Not the gunner who fired the shell, but me and my entire staff. He tried to kill all of us. I still have the scar, see? And yet, that man outwardly was just as calm and self-possessed as McLeod. Now, those circumstances sure don't apply here, Doctor. Captain. You say I'm determined to blame McLeod. Now, you appear just as determined to exonerate him. 
There is no evidence against him. When was the first death? The night McLeod arrived in Laredo. And there's been one every night since. Now, that's not coincidence, Captain. Now, if you leave that man at large, I feel this town should hold you responsible for any more killings. just said there. Captain, I've been thinking. Stop it. That's an order. You know what I think is confusing the You know what's confusing me? Is... Having the three of you in town together. So I'm going to take two and one and makes three and ship the three of you out together till I settle this. Well, now, Captain, you will report and relieve you at the summit station. We can't do that, sir. Why not? Because Hannigan's past the snowed in, that's why. That's right, sir. We wouldn't even be able to find those men for three weeks. Then relieve Drexel and Claiborne in Hyde City. Can't do that either. Them men you sent after them, they know them on sight, and we don't, Captain. Well, there's got to be some place I can send you. Captain Farmer Lee, sir. There's a lot of people in this town, sir, that think maybe I killed Gillis. If you send me out of town, it's, uh, it doesn't look like you're trying to protect me, sir. All right, clear out. <laughs> Quit worrying, Joe. Look at here, Reese. I'll quit worrying when you quit telling me I can't. <laughs> I know who's been killing these people. Oh, you do? Well, then, who is? Well, I ain't saying it until I can prove it. Seamus McCloud ain't the only one came into Laredo the day of that first killing. <laughs>
ever going to explain this to the captain. Good work, Reese. You scared that killer off just in time. Just. You uh, didn't happen to get a look at the strangler, did you? Well, um, well, no, Captain. You see, you see what happened was this. I got looking at this thing over here, and I want to tell you why I never seen anything like this my whole blame life. No, sir. Then I heard the music stop, and then the blade started w wiggling, and I couldn't move, Captain. I couldn't move at all. I was so scared, just like I am now. Get away from that thing, Reese. Come on. It's perfectly safe. The blade cannot drop. <laughs> ah, now you tell me, huh? <laughs> Seems I was mistaken. Sorry. You're sorry. I gotta have my head chopped off in there. Well, the head shorter, you wouldn't have been the same, Reese. Reese, uh, what were you doing here? Well, I, I figured all along, Captain, that the professor here and that fellow over there were the real killers. All along, Captain. On account of they come into town the, the first day they started. I assure you, my interest in murder is purely academic. You all right, Critch? I had a little trouble rounding him up, Captain. There's, uh, there's been another attempted murder, Mr. McLeod. So I've been told. Where were you this afternoon? Just wandering around. By yourself? Yes, Captain. You have to take my word I didn't come in here and try to strangle that man. Though why I'd pick him, I don't know. He's not even a part of the town I'm supposed to hate. But I'm sure the good doctor can find an answer for it. I've said my say. I want you to arrest me, Captain. There's a lot of people in this town blaming me for what's happened. That's why I want you to lock me up. But what changed your mind? There's another killing why I'm under lock and key. That'll clear me. I don't know. It's what I want. I'm sure to make the people of this town rest easier. All right, Joe. Take him over to jail and lock him up. What's the matter, Doctor? McLeod's in custody. That's what you wanted from the beginning, wasn't it? Few minutes. The whole town shut up tight as a drum. Reese. Yeah. If nothing happens tonight, that doesn't prove that Shamus was responsible. Would no, it? no, of course not. Of course not. Well, I know he isn't. Now you just quit worrying. I'm working on a different tack, and I'm gonna have all this solved. I'm gonna have this whole thing all taken care of in no time at all. Oh, hi there. Evening. Now you quit worrying. Don't you worry none at all. Stay off the streets. Things are happening tonight. Well? Miss Halsey, your mother asked me to have these things sharpened. I haven't brought them to you before because, well, because of your trouble. I understand. But I'm counting on leaving Laredo early in the morning. So you'd like your money? Comes to dollar thirty cents.
Here you are, Mr. Venner. <sighs> Mr. Venner, are you all right? Mr. Venner? Mr. Venner, this isn't ours. Now to figure out what to do with my winnings. Eleven cents. <laughs> you know what I'd like to figure out is why that killer picks the people he does. Well, there isn't any reason. That's your point, isn't it? They figure he has his own reason. Even if it doesn't make sense to us, it does to him. Well, there just doesn't seem to be any sort of connection at all. Well, let's look at it for a minute. There was a dog, a gambler, a middle-aged woman, Blacksmith. Now, does he pick his victim ahead of time or just on the spur? I don't know, but it can't be just because of their looks. Yeah, maybe it's something they're doing. Well, they were all doing something different. That's right. Yeah, I see. The blacksmith was filing metal, the fellow in the museum was playing a flute, and Mrs. Halsey was brewing tea. And that noise goes right through me. Uh, you ought to get yourself some earplugs like that scissor grinder fella. Wait a minute. The noise? The noise, that's it. That's the connection. The file, the flute, and the kettle. They all make noise. And a dog must have been barking or howling. Gillis fellow was always whistling. That's right. Hey, the scissor grinder come into town the same day as myself. Our killer is a man who can't stand high-pitched sounds like a scissor grinder. <laughs> Like you wanted us to, sir. Who knows when that scissors grinder had ever been caught? It's just lucky we couldn't go, Arthur. As usual, you've succeeded in spite of yourselves. Oh, no, sir. Not this time. This gives us a whole new way of looking at things, sir. You see, this is a whole new approach to the ranger's job. Really? How'd you say it, Chad? Well, I said it was more head work and less leg work. That's, that's what you've decided. Mm -hmm. ah. You know, uh, I made a few decisions myself. Good. You have, Captain? I'm thinking of a new approach. Oh, that's well, wonderful, sir. That means we're all thinking along the same lines. Well, not entirely. Uh, my new approach is this. Less horseplay, more hard work. Assignments taken without discussion, carried out as ordered. And if I find any resistance, I'll turn you over to my new adjutant. <laughs> <laughs> 